Thank you, guys. Do, has, does everyone hear me? Excellent. I hope you had a you have a great PyCon Canada, and I'd like to thank you to all the organizers. Actually, serverless doesn't really mean anything. Um, it's a really nice marketing term, so that cloud vendor. By, and, and cloud vendor means that actually you don't have to manage the servers. I prefer the term function as a service uh, because typically it's really like what you do, you, you cut a function and then the cloud is, uh, you, um, is managing it for you. So it promises low operational cost, infinite scalability, and zero administration. Um, we've been using it at my job, so I'm Adrian. Uh, I'm a Montreal, uh, Montrealer. Um, and I also, uh, I also code Python for the last eight years or so, and I've been doing, using a AWS for most of the time. Um, I've been doing mostly inf infrastructure work and uh, APIs. Um, I, built, I am building Dialog. Dialog, it's a, it's a new venture that aims to modernize the Canadian healthcare by uh, pr uh, providing an application which uh, you permits, which Sorry, providing an application so that you can consult with a doctor by video. And so we've been using AWS, we're using AWS and what is AWS Lambda? So AWS Lambda, it permits you to run code, uh, the, the JavaScript, Python, or Java. You pay by compute time, by chunk of uh, 100 milliseconds, and that's really cheap. The, the, you, have, you don't have to provision anything, so typically, uh, if you need to, uh, if at some point you need to execute like a, a, a 50, 50 parallel uh, function, Amazon will will go and run for you, uh, and it provides like theoretically infinite scalability. So the still the the constraint is by default you can't run more than 100. You have to request Amazon so, so that they can, and we did so that you can run more, but. By default, it's less than 100 for billing issues, so that you don't like if there is uh, some some error, you don't have like a, a thousand lambda function running for a, a night, which can be hard on the billing. Another constraint, well, you have uh, memory constraint. Another big constraint is like the 300 second time timeout. Typically, if your function still runs after uh, after well, it gets interrupted. And the really bad thing, I believe, is that it runs on Python 2.7. And um, I don't know when they're going to, when they're going to uh, update to Python 3. So the, how, how does it look? So it's, it's quite simple, actually. It's, it's a function which takes uh, an event and a context. Typically, the, 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 the challenge you have when you work with the Lambda function is that you can't, you can't uh, everything, everything you see from the outside world are behind those two, those two, two variables, two parameters. And in terms of the configuration, you, you can't really say, hey, this is a Lambda function, I've deployed a Lambda function for production or for dev development. It's like, no, you, you don't know, typically you're gonna know what version, what production environment, what environment you're running through those, uh, the, the, the event and the context. But it's, it's quite simple. The, the different use case you can, you can do is, uh, and what we do is chatbots, so because it's a really kind of event-driven, event so you, sometimes you have comments in Slack, and uh, you, need, you need just a function to execute, just a function to execute a piece of code. Uh, you can have parallel computation, so I did also like uh, tons of uh, mathematical computation last year, and I needed uh, to, uh, to run lots of computation and, and, and to, uh, in a short period, uh, to provide a result in a short period of time. Uh, data stream processing is also quite neat. So typically, uh, you could say you process your logs and send it to uh, some uh, third-party log interface, such as Logly. Logly provides, uh, by, the, uh, by the way, Logly provides a, a blueprint so that you can directly plug your, your logs from uh, AWS into uh, their interface. And HTTP services. So how do you do HTTP services? Amazon actually introduced, introduced uh, API Gateway. So what is API Gateway? API Gateway is, is really a, it's, it's a front door for your APIs. You can, typically you can declare endpoints, HTTP endpoints, and connect them to uh, different things such as Lambda. 
Um, it's automatic provisioning. Well, it's it's again you have a you have really nice uh, scaling feature, and it's you don't have to do anything. And in the doc, it says that with a few clicks in the AWS Management Console, you can set it up. Clicks. Do you really want to set up your infrastructure by clicking on an interface? Do you, actually, you don't want to do that. It's super boring, and the interface is really it's it's a pain. So setting up like the, the, the whole clicking interface is really a bad selling point. I mean, it was to me, because I really wanted to be able to automate everything. And so hopefully, the, uh, Amazon worked on a, a, a nice, uh, nice package, which is Chalice. So Chalice is a Python serverless micro framework for AWS. I know, lots of buzzword. It's a Flaskish API. It doesn't have anything to do with Flask. And, uh, but it's, it's, it, it has the same API, so that if you're used to Flask, well, you know how to do Chalice. Um, it's provided by AWS. I'm not affiliated with it. Uh, how do you do it? So typically, it's really simple. You pip install, you create a new project, and you deploy. It's that simple. And I'm not going to run a demo because the last time it was a disaster, but it works. So, and typically after, after this Chalice deploy, you have an endpoint with your service running. And the, well, it's a hello world behind. Now, the, uh, the, the API. So, for those, uh, for those who, are, uh, who know about Flask, it's quite, it's quite, it's Flaskish. Typically, you declare an app, then you have a root, and boom. Make sense? Cool. So what do we do with it at Dialog? So Dialog is a, typically it's a chat and messaging application. And so obviously we have to send some push notification when you have a new message or you know, when you receive a care plan. Or, so the, the thing is the push notification was really the use case where it's an event. You don't obviously want to, have a, to, to run a service uh, all, uh, all the time to, to have a, a running service. It's really more you want to invoke something, send a notification, and that's it. And uh, what we did actually is, a, is, a, is an HTTP API, which provides two endpoints, register the, the device, and uh, send push to users. Sorry. So in that use case, it was re as you see, it was really super simple. So we didn't want to bother like having a, 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 an application running all the time because it was it's and the thing is if there's no user if there's no like during during the weekends if there's no user well because it's a, we are we are providing a telemedicine so it's kind of a, it works with a, in work hour, in business hours so we don't really want to have something running that we pay for we just want to at some point register a device and send push send push so it was really simple the, this use case was perfect for using it on a on a API gateway. So, and in Chalice, it translates like this. Typically, you declare the app. You have your different routes, and the outside word is masked to you, like the the one we we saw in a, in a, the previous slides. So you have the the current request, such as in Flask, which is going to give you the different uh, variables, such as the request body, uh, headers, and also like the stage variables. So it's quite neat and quite handy. Like we had, typically we could the, the, the thing in less than maybe 100, 100, 100 line of code. The infrastructure, so typically, the, uh, so you have like the API gateway. So typically what you see is the, the API gateway in the center with the Lambda and Dynamo. We use DynamoDB because typically we had to save information and uh, the uh, simple notification service that Amazon provides so that you can push to uh, Apple, uh, the Apple Cloud messaging, Google, and also uh, Baidu, also like a... The, um, the thing, the thing uh, to important here is that we, we think that function as a service is actually a stateless, which means that you can't really have state, but actually you, you can definitely connect to a, a, any, any database. In that case, uh, we have to connect just push token user ID so that we are able to send, send push to that user. So it's if DynamoDB being a JSON uh, database, it, and really it was really handy because it's a tiny record, and it's, uh, it's also like really fast. 
and um, the, 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 it's, it runs uh, behind uh, and it's inside the Amazon services, which means that typically your Lambda connects to it pretty fast. So the, uh, the, the model is quite simple. I don't know if you... So typically, the, uh, the, the, we, we store, we, we simply like have a present the API, we receive the, the phone each time the phone uh, load the app, we register the push token uh, through, Dynamo, through, through the, to the simple notification service of Amazon, which gives us back an, uh, an endpoint, uh, a, res a resource identifier inside Amazon, and then we register this uh, into uh, DynamoDB. So as soon as a, a doctor needs to notify, to, to chat, to, to notify a, a, a user, like, hey, I'm ready to do the consultation, well, the, it's, it's, quite, it's quite super simple. It's uh, typically we, from Lambda, we get, we, get the, we get the information of the user from DynamoDB, and we connect to the simple notification service and we go, we go, we send the push to the to the user. So it's it's a really it was a really simple, simple, super simple case where no. It was like the the main challenge was more in terms of the the, isol the isolation of the the, env the environment because as as a, as a, as I showed you like here. You don't have the. It runs on a Amazon environment, so you can't you can't like uh, you you can't really control the environment variables. Actually, you don't have access to it. And one good thing when you deploy a web app is to have your environment variables, such as which database to connect. Because here, if I have a dev uh, dev environment, I'm going to connect to a different DynamoDB table than if, than if I'm on prod. And the idea is that uh, how do you do that in a function in a in, in this kind of app, knowing that you know, you, you don't have access to the environment. And this is where, actually, API Gateway provides you different stages. What they call stages is actually the environment. And you can add variable to those stages. And those variable, uh, those variable you, can you can get those variable inside the current request. So typically, this is the, the, the main uh, challenge and the main uh, as aspect is that you have to buy it, uh, int you change the way you deploy your application because you have to deploy on, on API gateway and inform about the different stages and the different stage variable and this is something that not, so Chalice does not provide yet uh, we are working on, I'm working I'm also working on it we use a on own, uh, own solution for this and we can't open source it yet um, so the um, forgot. so another thing, another thing that is quite challenging with uh, Lambda in all them, and it's particular, particularly to my domain, is that actually Lambda doesn't have. Uh, you have to check the for the certification PSI or in our case uh, HIPAA because I'm working in a really regulated environment, uh, regulated field, the health and the health healthcare system. So Lambda, as Lambda is not regulated, I cannot. I have like restriction on the 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 information that can transit on Lambda. And so, for example, here. I, I, you see that the, the phone sends the user ID. It actually does not send the user ID, but a hash of the user ID, so that the, the user ID being part of the patient information is not, does not transit on Lambda. And this is, some, this is also like, depending on the, the field you're working on, you have to really pay attention to the certification. Um, and the same for DynamoDB. By the way, it's the same for DynamoDB, but it's out of scope for the, 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 um, the talk. Um, so the 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 main the main summary uh, the main lesson I mean the main experience I'd like to share is that the it seems to be quite uh, pain, painful in terms of the the way you have to do things the way you because you change the way you deploy but it it, it is it is actually worth it because it comes with uh, tons of other features. So typically, like you don't have to do, you don't have to think about you. You have throttling uh, included in API Gateway, so you can say, "Hey, this resource, this HTTP endpoint, I don't want." Uh, I, you can throttle on a specific endpoint. You have highlights, metrics, scaling. The scaling is it's auto provision, so you don't have to think about it. And in terms of security, well, it's it's you can also define for one API Gateway. You can define a single authorizer, 
which is going to, to, to be like the front door for your, all your, your lambda function behind. In terms of cost, it's also quite, it, it, it really depends on your use case. So you, if you have a, a kind of a service which, with, a, with a, some long time of non, uh, inactivity, it's perfect. So ch a chatbot would be perfect because chatbot typically when we have comments in Slack so that we can see like, for example, uh, uh, the, the status of servers, stuff like this. You don't obviously want to have a long running application for this. And you're going to, it's, it's typically the, the cost here is more dynamo, in, in our case is more DynamoDB because DynamoDB you pay for the, the data that, that, that is stored, but the rest is, is free. It's uh, if you don't use it. So, as a, as a summary, it's really like API Gateway and Lambda it, like definitely is a challenge and the, all the answers are not obviously on the Amazon documentation, but it's really worth it uh, depending on the, the use case. I, I, I'd love, I'd like also, um, I forgot to mention also that we, we also had a, a, like the, the parallelization of it can be quite, quite cool. And the thing is also Lambda is a, is a uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh. And also, lambda is also, is maintained. If you have if you have a lambda running, the the, the overhead, like the, the startup time, can be quite long. But the, the 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 container is maintained for a short period of time. So if you have multiple call in the in the same period of time, it's going to be quite fast. So. I have like really neat references actually. Uh, the, the first link, serverless architecture from Microbits, which is on uh, Martin Fowler, uh, Martin Fowler blog, is this is if you, if you're going into serverless uh, with Amazon or any other vendor, this is a must read. It's really well explained and it's really like it explains also like the, the different challenges. There is also Charity Majors. We she she did she's a, a, a DevOps and she did a, she did she does a lot of serverless. She just did a, a talk at server serverless conf. So yes, there is a serverless conf. Um, there and the 12 well 12 factor app is always needed. Uh, it's a 12 paradigm that web application should I mean may, should respect. Um, the 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 idea of serverless is that it's a trend and it's a hot topic, but it is here to stay. And the, it's like the operational quality of the application is switching from the shoulder of the DevOps to the application developer. Because the application developer has to deal with, the new, with new constraint in terms of computing, in terms of memory, and in terms of the, the environment itself. It has to respect the constraint and so he has, he, he, has to, he has to deal with the, the actual quality, the actual status of the app. But still, I would gladly encourage you to, for, use, for a specific use case, I would gladly encourage you to, to, to use it. And this is it. was quite fast, but if you have any question, gentlemen here, I'm going to uh, thank you. Great presentation. I had a question about what Dialog does for their development environments um, before putting code up into Lambda. Like, do, you, do you emulate the Lambda runtimes on your desktop or to, to, te to test, you mean? Yeah. So, th and this is um, this. Well, actually, you can you cannot emulate like we we not, we do not emulate. So it's mostly a unit and functional. The, the functional test we we have integration test. So what we do is when we we push a, a, a developer on a, a dev or on prod, we then have run scope. I don't know if you know run scope, but we have run scope test. That are going to eat the, uh, the 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 endpoints, but we don't we don't emulate it on a on a locally. Actually, I, I believe you uh, the you can't you can't I, I don't think you can do you can invoke your functions, so you you would need to uh, upload them 
to Amazon and then invoke it locally. Uh, invoke it, but you can't really emulate. It runs on a Linux Linux container. The list of the diff, uh, the image, the Linux image, are, is on uh, the documentation. So it's. But yeah, this is also like the the one. So thank you. Sorry, I forgot. This is also like a, a, a big challenge. Is like testability. So that's why, in the same time, you don't want to have like a full application, and that's why you want to really reduce the use cases to some simple stuff. But yeah, no, there's no emulation locally. Thank you. We have another question over here. Um, hi. So you mentioned that chatbots are a good. Um, I'm sorry. You mentioned that chatbots are a good use case. Um, and I was kind of uh, working on a chatbot recently with Slack, and I thought about the kind of um, Lambda architecture. Um, but there was a particular use case where I couldn't really see where it fitted, which was uh, scheduled kind of operations and cron tabs. If you think about the concept of cron tabs, mm -hmm. how would you schedule like a function to be sent off in the future? So like, to be like called 10 like, a.m. on yeah. Monday or tomorrow mm -hmm. every day at like 10 a.m. How does that work? AWS CloudWatch. So AWS. So typically, you need AWS CloudWatch. So AWS CloudWatch is a, another service that permits you to uh, to have alerts, and but it also you can also have typically cron uh, like regular regular uh, action. So you can you can you can in CloudWatch you can configure hey, at 10 a.m. every morning I want to call it that function, or I want to call an HTTP endpoint, or I want to. You can do whatever you want, but it's not uh, integrated into AWS Lambda, so you you have to go to uh, AWS CloudWatch. I can give you the the documentation by after if you know. No, no, no. Go ahead. Um, I needed to configure it. Like, what if I what if I need to have a database? What if I need to? Have a oh, sorry. <laughs> can you hear me now? Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So, what if I needed to? configure it and what if I needed to have a database that needs to be behind dynamic you're saying it's a cloud watch but that's like a GUI interface on Amazon service right I guess what you're saying is it's not baked into the lambda architecture so so your problematic is how do you how do you how, typically how you deep how do you deploy how do you configure the the wall the wall components uh, how do you deploy the scheduling so in so the scheduling, there is a, uh, another service in, Ama in Amazon, and typic typically uh, you can you can configure uh, alarms and say I want this alarm to take to 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 be uh, okay. this alarm each morning at ten, and then you can plug it to invoke your AWS, your AWS Lambda function. Right, right. So the way you configure it, there is the GUI. I, I, I prefer to use uh, the uh, cloud formation, which is another AWS tool. And typically, you can you can describe your infrastructure with uh, YAML or JSON, JSON, and uh, and w in which you would you would okay. define all those. So that's that's by the way the fair, uh, uh, one nice way for AWS. It's kind of out of the sp uh, scope for the for the talk, but yeah. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? No, it looks like. No more questions. Thank you so much for yeah. presenting. It was really great. Everybody, can we get another round of applause, please? Thank you.